inspection and adaptation is arguably the most fundamental pattern that you can have in an agile way of working. It's at the heart of the engine room of agile practice. Inspection and adaptation is the rationale behind having things like scrum sprints or iterations or time boxes because what you do with these uh, discrete cycles is to inspect and adapt. You inspect and adapt two things principally. You inspect and adapt the product requirements that you're working on. You'll release something to the market as um, you'll see what the, the impact of that is and you'll adjust the requirements backlog, the requirements set that you have accordingly. Okay, That's inspecting the market, inspecting your requirements and adapting them accordingly. The second thing that you subject to inspection and, and adaptation in um, an agile way of working um, is your, your, your agile practices themselves. You'll inspect and adapt the process that you're following. You look at the way you are working. You look at the way you're working as a development and delivery team. You look at the way you're working with other stakeholders like product owners. You look for ways of improving those relationships and ways of making sure that better value is delivered more quickly. Okay. One of the key rules or tenets of inspection and adaptation is that it should occur as closely as possible to the time and place of work. That minimizes waste, okay? Because obviously, if inspection and adaptation happens too long after the event, then um, further waste, further uh, deteriorations could have occurred, and uh, those would have to be fixed. So you want it to be very, very close to the time when work is done. You want to inspect what, what uh, what's happened and uh, what the outcome has been. You also want it to occur as close as possible to the place of work. So ideally, in agile practice, the people who uh, perform inspection and adaptation are the people who are actually doing the work. It's the team members. You don't want senior managers micromanaging teams because they won't themselves have a, have a full and proper handle of, of, of what's been going on and things can be lost in translation. So you really want the teams themselves to be empowered to inspect and adapt their own process.